Beulah Wright Porter Price was born in St. Louis, Missouri. After her mother became a widow, she worked as a seamstress to support the small family as Beulah attended school. Around 1880, she moves to Indianapolis, Indiana. In 1889, Beulah begins working as a school teacher. In 1893, she marries Jefferson D. Porter. Then she quits her job so that she can attend Indiana Medical College. In 1897, she opened her medical practice, becoming the first black woman to be a doctor in Indianapolis. However, people weren't interested in being treated by a black woman. She often had to return to teaching. In 1901, she closed her medical practice and committed to being a principal of Robert Gold Shaw School. But that wasn't the end of her medical career. Only the beginning, really, as she would spend the next decade fighting the tuberculosis epidemic in Indianapolis while still working as a school principal. In 1903, Beulah met journalist Lillian Thomas Fox. The two shared common ideas, and together, they founded Women's Improvement Club of Indianapolis. In the early 20th century, these clubs were created for women by women. Oftentimes, they were just book clubs, but many did focus on increasing education, creating job opportunities, or community engagement. In the case of Beulah and Fox, theirs was a club for black women who really did start out as a book club for just a few professional women, but it grew pretty fast. Within a few years, there were housewives, domestic workers, social workers, seamstresses, and any black women who were interested, although they capped it at 20 members. They still read books, but also shared information and skills with each other. That first year, they managed to bring some prominent speakers to the city, including W.E.B. Du Bois and Ida B. Wells, as one of their key goals was racial pride and solidarity. In 1904, they ended up opening the first open-air hospital in the United States and fighting the tuberculosis epidemic that was gripping Indianapolis. Let's go back to 1903 for a second. The city in Indianapolis was amid a tuberculosis outbreak that had been going on for several years and would go on for many more. The city built Flower Mission Hospital to treat tuberculosis patients. The issue was that they would only treat white patients. In 1905, the Women's Improvement Club received a donation from Frank W. Flanner, a Quaker who, in Quaker tradition, despised racism. He also allowed them to use his land in Brightwood, a black neighborhood, to open up Oak Hill Tuberculosis Camp. This is when Beulah's medical training came into play. Although they could only treat six patients at a time, it was more than any of the major hospitals in the city were willing to do. For all intents and purposes, she was the lead doctor. While constantly needing to fundraise and ration supplies, they kept the facility going until 1916 when they were essentially forced to close. They can no longer keep up with the fundraising as treatment has changed and it became more expensive. The neighborhood was being developed and they were being squeezed from all sides. Unfortunately, things weren't great in her personal life either. The poet Sean Carter once said, For she loves her work more than she does me. And honestly, at 23, I would probably love my work more than I did she. So we ain't we. It's me and her. Because what she prefers over me is work. At some point, Beulah's husband Jefferson Porter divorced her while she was operating Oak Hill. By 1910, she had begun renting a room in the home of Dr. Joseph H. Ward, another legendary Indianapolis doctor and the original head of Tuskegee Veterans Hospital. In 1914, she marries Walter Price, a school teacher, and of course, the two moved to a home on Indiana Avenue, the center of the black community at the time. The two stayed together until Beulah's death in 1928. The Women's Improvement Club of Indianapolis continues long after her passing, up until 1980. They provided scholarships and assistance during World War I. Membership would be passed down from generation to generation, from mother to daughter. When tuberculosis flared up again in the 1920s, they worked to care for patients at various locations around the city. In 1938, they convinced the Flower Mission to open up a wing just for black patients. Teacher, doctor, principal, community organizer, Beulah Wright Porter Price took on a lot of different roles in her life. One thing that remained consistent is that she cared for people and didn't just say it, but proved it through her entire professional and volunteer career. Her efforts at Oak Hill were not paid. She did that because she believed we should take care of those in need. There are no parks to commemorate her work, no statues, no plaques or days of recognition for her. She is but another unsung hero whose actions have been overlooked by both time and the generations that followed. But it is those who do good without the need for accolades and applause that are not only the most deserving, but also the people that provide the sparks of hope that keep the rest of us moving forward. 